Howdy, howdy. Hey, Raj. How are you? Good. I think Excellent. that's how I'm going to start everything is howdy, howdy. I've been waiting for you to come to that realization. I need a catchphrase, man. Howdy, howdy is it. That's, that's it. That's it. It fits you. It works. Howdy, it's howdy. Howdy. I'm, don't get, I'm not going to be saying it. I almost said it. Don't oh, yeah. Don't say it. it. Don't take my phrase, man. No, 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 no. I'm going to try it today throughout the show. So don't don't laugh or smirk. <laughs> oh, don't well, make fun of I me. might do both. But um, yeah, man. So today we have the legendary vocalist, Jamaican singer. You've heard him on tons of Jamaican tunes and classics. Winston Jarrett is with Ooh, us today. Heavy. Heavy, heavy indeed. Man, I've been looking forward to this show Me too. all week. I got some uh, cool questions to ask him. Uh, hopefully the people out there do too. Um, yes. get, get your questions already. But before we get into the show show, we're going to get into the news. Um, and I want to start off by talking about uh, there's this really, really cool tribute, Cox and Dodd tribute that happened on May 9th. A good friend of ours, Nina, got invited to be on a Tiny T's Mighty Cloudburst sound system. Yeah. And Tiny T's dope. I am a big fan. Uh, he, he's always coming with his cool shows. He's got tons of old school records, and he has a nice little setup. And he's been doing his thing all throughout quarantine up until now. So go check that out. Go on YouTube, uh, type in a tribute to Sir Cox and Dodd, uh, Mighty Cloudburst, and you'll find that. Go check that out. And um, yeah, scope it. Check that out. I know Nina, uh, who Roger is mentioning, is a great DJ here in LA, and she's just got a great collection. So the music that you're going to hear on that is just going to be excellent. Right. I can say that right off the top. Um, I got a few things I want to mention in the world of reggae. One, um, before I get to like the news news, I just kind of wanted to mention this. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a huge Midnight Akabeka Von Benjamin fan. Um, fan isn't the real world word. I mean, he's just, you know, my favorite artist of all time, pretty much. And um, this week, uh, the artist Drake, uh, you know, that the Drake, I guess he's like selling scented candles now or something. And hmm. um, so he did an interview with, uh, I believe it was Complex Magazine. And he mentioned that when people buy his candle, he wants them while burning it to listen to this. Uh, he called it an album, but it's really not an album. It's uh, this live midnight show from 2004 in Eugene, Oregon. Um, wow. And it's really the first time. And then there was an, uh, someone else went off kind of on a tangent about this uh, uh, from the magazine, I think, getting into like, who is midnight? Because they didn't know. And, you know, now, we, now it's relevant all of a sudden because Drake mentioned it. Um, but it was cool because I just have always I, I've never heard a big like mega pop star like give any love to, to Midnight. Even, you know, we've seen lots of crossovers over the years of, of you know, big stars getting into Jamaican inspired music. Um, but I've just never heard anyone reference Vaughn or Midnight or anything. And, and in my opinion, Vaughn is one of the greatest MCs of all time, most original, just most sickest MCs like you could ever have. And so to hear some rappers like pay homage to him um, mm -hmm. was just really cool. It was like a cool moment that I was like big enough for me to like want to talk about <laughs> on the show. Um, of course. Yeah. So that was super cool. There's another this is kind of related um, at the great uh, editorial site, worldoreggae.com. They have a, a featured article on the Zion I Kings crew right now, which is uh, for the last 20 years, Zion I Kings, it's a, it's a collective of uh, Andrew Moon Bain from Zion High Productions, David, Ja David Goldfine, and um, I -grades, uh, the I Grade Records head, uh, Tippy, Laurent Tippy Alfred. And they've combined over the last 20 years to do music production for a lot of artists, including, you know, I know them through Midnight. There's a lot of Von Benjamin uh, tracks that have uh, Zion I Kings backing on it. And I think they're, and, and you know, they've backed all kinds of um, modern roots artists like, you know, Loot and Fire and just the, the list goes on and on. And uh, it was cool to, to see this featured article and an interview with John David. Uh, I encourage everyone to go check that out at worldofreggae.com because this is, it truly is one of their, they're, they're, they're really one of the best modern 
roots groups. You know, they're not trying to have some old school vintage sound. It's a clean, you know, clean roots sound. Um, but in terms of uh, people who are doing that, they're one of my favorites, if not my favorite. So go check that out, that article at worldofreggae.com. Also, we've been mentioning all the birthdays. And, you know, since the last episode, there's been a crazy amount of birthdays. I was looking at the VP mm-hmm. Reggae birthday calendar. And just in the last couple of weeks, we had Jacob Miller, Tommy McCook, Justin Hines, who's, you know, a personal hero of mine, Earl 16, Prince Allah, Sly Dunbar. And this Friday, May... 14th there's a pair of big production birthdays on the same day it's uh, mm-hmm. clive chin of randy's fame and of course we had miss pat his mom on the show not too long ago and winston riley of the techniques label their birthdays are wow. both this friday so uh big happy birthday to all these amazing artists that have influenced roger and i and so many people throughout the years happy birthday and um just to wrap up the news segment i want to mention that this is our 37th episode and mm. wow that's crazy and not only is it a special one because we have in just a few minutes joining us the great winston jarrett but also this is going to be our last episode that we're live streaming on wednesday nights um we are switching to a pre-recorded format after this because you know the world's starting to slowly get back to some kind of normalcy and you know between the artists' schedules and Roger and myself being musicians and having lots of things going on, it's getting harder and harder to, you know, lock down uh, a, a set time and to make sure we keep up with the high quality of guests that we've, you know, that we and our audience have come to expect from this show. And so we're switching to a pre recorded format. We're still going to be putting out, we've got lots of great stuff booked for the summer. We're still going to be putting these uh, pod clashes out with a lot of regularity. But I just wanted to let people know if they're looking for it on Wednesdays or if you're listening to the podcast feed and you're, you know, used to it, show, a new episode showing up in your, in your pod app at a certain day, that's going to change a little bit. But don't worry, don't fret. We're not going anywhere. We're going to have lots of cool artists coming up so i wanted to mention that and then as always the great vp records has hooked us up with another record to give away to you good people and this week is no exception in terms of the quality it's we have a seven inch from hugh mundell rasta have the handle the the heavy classic tune rasta have the handle from hugh mundell I've always loved this tune very much. And the flip side is Dangerous Match 2. It's a Roots Radix Scientist version. These pressings, like last week we had another one of these from uh, Johnny Osborne. These these seven inches are mastered really well. They have these great sleeves. And you can go enter to win this record right now. Just enter the contest in the YouTube description. You can also find it in the podcast uh, description if you're listening to this via the podcast. Go enter that because you want to get this. And we want to big up VP Records every time for these great giveaways. And that is going to wrap up the giveaway and news of the week section. Let's play some records before we bring Winston on. I think you're going first again, Raj. What you got? Yes, sir. This week I have Dance Cleopatra Dance by Prince Buster's a ska tune. Uh, check it out and we'll talk about it. All right. Oh, great Caesar. Could you kindly let Cleopatra dance this dance? Dance, Cleopatra, dance, 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 Cleopatra, dance. Thank you. 
Jeez, man, I hope they let Cleopatra dance. Are they better after all that? After all that. Prince Buster and the Prince Buster All-Stars right there with the Scott Scorcher. Um, I wanted to play this tune because I wanted to find an example. I had this discussion with someone uh, of ska music, and we were talking about you know different varieties of ska music and the double kick. Um, mm. we're, I was talking to, I was talking to um, the homie about that, and then this song came across, and I was like, okay, this would be a good song to play on the show. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are listening to the kick drum, uh, Nibs has a good little, you know, boom, 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 boom. And I, that's the first thing that jumps out at me as far as the, the rhythm and the groove. Um, it's the Skylights, you know, credited as Prince Buster All-Stars, but you can totally tell that solo is a, it's like a Roland solo. I think, is it Roland? Or did you, you know, hear Tommy in there? Hmm. And speaking of, just before I forget, speaking of Lloyd uh -huh. Nibs, that yesterday was the anniversary of the day he passed as well. Oh, geez. Mr. Lloyd Nibs. Yeah. I mean, greatest drummers ever in any music, you know? You, yeah. You, you, can you find musicians that solely defined a, a part of the pie? You know, I, I right. really can't. I mean, it's there's true. It is true. He solely defined that ska beat and the Buru beat. Granted, it was influenced by stuff that, that went on in the marching band and, you know, Alpha Boys and stuff. But gee whiz, man, he's influenced so many different, uh, levels you know and, and and almost nobody can play it like him even to this day you know what i mean oh for sure like not only was he such an innovator but he's like the only one who was ever ever able to like quite execute that pocket you know what i mean right quick story i was on tour and in france uh opened up for the scottalites agros and of course you know scottalites are playing and i'm there side stage watching him and the drum set was any stock drum set you know that, that right. was there at the venue but it didn't sound like it when he was on the drums. It sounded he's got that touch. He's got that touch, man. I mean, sometimes we look back and go, okay, what's the magic? What kind of set were you using? What's the microphone placement? Um, no, it, a lot of it comes down to the individual, the actual mm -hmm. player of oh, the instrument. For sure. You know, and so it was very, very obvious when I saw Mr. Lloyd Nib play. But yes, he's he's definitely showcasing in that song. Um yeah, the, the melody, we were talking about this earlier that you recognize the melody, and it comes from uh, Joshua Fit, The Battle of Jericho. It's an old spiritual, um, and so that song has been used many right. times. And um, then it, it went on to be the swing easy rhythm is is what like most reggae fans would know it as. You know, when it slows down and the bass is like, doom, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, definitely. And, and that melody. Oh, for sure. Um a good friend of mine who we're going to have on the show in the future, Joey Altruda, his band Jump With Joey did a version too. Might have been the first. No. Yeah. Could have been one of the first times I heard uh, that rendition. Mm. But yeah, man, Scott Scorcher had to play it for you guys. It's it's a great tune. And and a side note is the OG is on Blue Beat. Um, but this is a 1972. Of course, you're not going to be able to see for nothing. No, I can see it. I can see it. 1972 belgium release oh wow look at that isn't that weird so yeah yeah and definitely another, never seen that label before. <laughs> right and another um side note is and you go on discogs and, and they won't let you sell certain releases that are i don't, I don't know what but this yeah. release cannot be sold on discog so i was trying to look <laughs> it's really weird trying to anyways <laughs> it, well you know I, I like to look up every now and then like okay what's this oh what's for that? sure yeah yeah and uh no it's priceless so little side note but um devin what do you got for us this week all right well this you know sometimes one of the cool things about this show is we get to play like rarities and just you know showcase the music we like to talk about but sometimes you just got to bring the big guns out you know mm -hmm. and i think this tune even though i still think it fits the description of a rare tune uh for most people i know that with within our inner circle this song is really this song is famous we always talk about this being just one of the greatest rhythm sections that we've ever heard play and to me this song really just stands alone if for nothing i mean it's a great the, the vocals are great the melody is great but just what the band is doing so if you're a musician just listen to everything everybody's doing on this the lead guitar every everything this is the reggae boys with selassie <laughs>
You know, as a guitar player, the first thing I hear on that is both the guitars. You know, that that lead picking guitar, mm-hmm. that whole this that whole thing he's doing throughout is just it's amazing. And then that other rhythm guitar, you know, doing the it's like the skinhead skank, but it's the staccato. You know, chick 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 like that that stuff. Right. It's just like this that 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 band on that song really like it sounded kind of like some other stuff, but but to me that. I've never heard really that that specific groove like before or since really done right. by anybody in that way. You well, know? it's it's totally the upsetters, right? Yeah, it's the upsetters. Yeah, yeah, hippie boys or whatever they were calling themselves like at that exact time. But it's the upsetters. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it was it's a 1969 upsetter production, Lee Perry production. It's Alva Lewis and Glenn Adams are the reggae boys, is what I think. Um, it's what I've wow. read. You can't find a whole lot about the reggae boys. Like I had always thought the reggae boys. Became, like we're the pioneers it was the same group but apparently mm-hmm. that's not true um so if anybody out there and we can maybe even ask winston about this but if anybody out there knows more about the the reggae boys i would look because whenever i come across compilations from that era mm-hmm. if there's a reggae boys tune on it that's what i always like go find first because i love their i love their vocals they're always like um super conscious cultural lyrics um great melodies great harmonies and they always have great rhythms from that time so that's you know that's one of my favorite eras is you know that late 60s but with groups that were singing rasta music and uh bands that were i mean geez the upsetters at that time you know you can't and you often when we go play, when, we, when we dj out you often play the flip side of that which is what's it called x-ray vision the organ x-ray version? vision is the yeah. organ version yeah the very first version i heard of this tune and it, it's funny because it all made sense when I heard the vocal version. The first uh, hearing X-ray vision, there's nothing really fancy. Other, it's really the groove that attracts you for, with that song. Right. Because the organ's going, you know, bum bum bum, bum bum na 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 na. Yeah. And it's like, okay, all right, that's cool. Glenn Adams or Winston Wright? I'm not sure. It sounds like a Glenn Adams vibe to me. Right. Um, it's then Glenn when Adams I heard in the reggae boys, so I mean. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So it, it probably is. Totally. And then hearing the vocal version, it makes sense. Okay, you're just right, right, doubling right. the melody. <laughs> um, the, the way that comes in, just that one snare hit. hit that, oh! It, that was my little fun fact. That was my ringtone for a long time. When I first got a oh, phone geez. that lets you like, put you know, a song, right. I put that one. Razor. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how I knew his phone was going. Oh, man. <laughs> you're, in the, you're in the middle of the market. You're in the middle of Ralph's. And it's like, bah, doo, doo, yeah. doo, 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 and those fills. Dang, those are speaker. Oh, those will kill your speakers. They're so in your face kind of thing. But that whole tune, you're right. As soon as you started it, as many times as I've heard that song, it's like you can't get enough of it. Every instrument is just perfect, down to like the the clave, you know, percussion yeah. that that would be like all throughout. Kink. Yeah, yeah, all throughout the upsetter stuff, Lee Perry stuff. It would, you know, clink 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 clink. You really yeah. don't hear the clave in any other stuff, really. I'm I can't think of any other tunes you'd hear it any other producer that's trying that. Um, but yeah, the drums stick out, the lead guitar, geez, great tune, yeah. It's all, Someone's commenting that it's Lloyd Chalmers. Is, are they saying that on ah, the video, that could be Lloyd yeah, Chalmers? Yeah. It could be, I mean, it, it, it could be, and, and yeah, it, it might be. Um, I, I mean, Lloyd Chalmers and the Upsetters could, could very well be, yeah. The, the, the fact that the organ was so simplistic led me to a Glenn Adams, and not to take mm. anything away from Glenn Adams, but it it's those kind of memorable lines granted he was doubling the um that's what i'm saying if line. the producer if the producer just said you know copy that vocal line then it could right. have been any organist you know it could have yeah because once you but get it, the direction but, but, it changes but, your style a but little bit. If, if you told winston right to do right, that right, that's true he would he'd, <laughs> he'd have to throw in some chromatic fills and stuff like that because he's just a little virtuoso so right um but you're right yeah if we we're on a game show i'd say glenn adams but i mean yeah ian's got the yeah. little charmers 
And I think people who do know, I was going to say most people know, but most people don't know. But people who do know that song largely know it from one of those upsetters, you know, classic upsetters records. I think it was Clint mm-hmm. Eastwood. I want to say it was Clint Eastwood. Right yeah. again. Um, that tune, Selassie, was on it. Uh, okay. On one of those. This, my copy is, you know, well, I've always seen it as that punch uh, that I have up here, the arts on the slide, that, mm-hmm. that Palma punch label. But mine is like what people saw in the video. It's like a, it's a blank, but somebody put like some cool colorful stripes all over it yeah of course they always do yeah so that's how like when i'm looking through my records that's just like always one that i don't play that one out a lot i always bring it with me but i just like i almost never put it on but i just always see that in there when i'm like trying to find a record i'm like yeah should i Eh, not right now such a great tune oh it's so heavy man yeah (laughs) dude yeah you can't get enough of that one so Um, i've been i've been saving that one just because to me it's like Sometimes I forget that the songs that we know so well, they're not so well mm-hmm. known by everybody, you know? So right. I wanted to share that and talk about it. For sure. Um, heavy hitter, dude. Heavy. And that is our Record of the Week segment. And as always, our Record of the Week is brought to you by... No, that's not what it's brought to you by. It's brought to you by the Rootfire Reggae Pod Clash merchandise store. Yes. Go to rootfire.net, click on the store tab, and get yourself some Reggae Pod Clash gear to add mm-hmm. to your reggae gear collection. You've seen us drink from the mugs. You've seen me wear the hoodies. I rock the hat all the time. Um, my brother and I wear the hoodies all the time. The beanies are great. We got all kinds of nice stuff up there. Go check it out, please. And, you know, it helps to pay for the uh, cost of the show. So if you just feel like making a donation, you can make a Venmo donation to Root Fire. This is a nonprofit show. We don't make any money, but there are some expenses, and it does help out. Um, what, why do I keep clicking on that? All right. Um, I think There's the, the mug. That's the mug. That is a nice mug. I got one, too. Let's see. Shall we, shall we cheers? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do a little baby cheers. Blink. Cheers. Oh, shoot. I broke my camera. <laughs> yes. Um, All right, Rod, do the honors, part. please. Yes. Our guest today has been one of the main ingredients of Jamaican music. His voice can be heard on countless ska rock steady and reggae recordings. Please welcome to the pod clash, Mr. Winston Jarrett. Yes. Winston, how you doing, sir? Yes, David and Roger. How are you doing, my brother? I'm good. Good. Man, Great. so nice to have you on. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, yeah man. man. Welcome, man. Everything, everything is Irene, you know? Good. You definitely. And thank God that I can work with you guys, you know? And oh, then, man. You know, we can spread the message, you know, and the whole history of the, the Jamaican music, you know, because a lot of our family, we have to call them family, because we're all family, like, mm-hmm. you know, Alta Nelson, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Bonavillas, you know, and a lot of those artists that really passed away, but them so rest in peace, you know, and they, the music always live on because yeah. the message is all about music going to play in heaven, you know, because heaven is where the music the father really loved the music and all the angels. That's right. Amen to yeah, that. I love the music. You know, Definitely. so music really inspired a lot of people, you know, and touched them so deep down because it's what put us all together. We can communicate, you know, and it's a joy to be here, man. So Definitely. It's a joy to have you here, man. Such me, a joy. And, me and Devin are big fans of your work and, and, and your voice is, is like no other. Um, you mentioned Out and Alice. So let's just start with that. Um, you know, your time with Out and Alice and the Flames. I want to definitely uh, talk more and, and elongate on some of the tunes that you've, uh, that were on. But take us all the way back to the beginning, like your first meetings with Out and Alice. How did, how did that come about? Well, I have, to go, I have to back up a little when you touch. Oh, please do, yeah. I was born in the parish of St. Anne's, Lime Tree Garden. That's where my mother and my father come from, you know. And I, I, I was born there, but I grew up in Trenchtown. My mother took me to, to Kingston when I was five years old. When, when I come to town, I, I wasn't going to elementary government school yet because they never take you, you you couldn't admit in, in this in the school when you are five year old you have to be seven it started from seven so mm-hmm. 
When I come to Kingston with my mother, took me to Kingston, I was five. So I have to wait until I reach a seven year old before I can go to, to school. When I reached that age, I went to the halfway tree school. You see that big clock in the middle of the road. Nice. Halfway tree. So that's where I go to school. My mother was working at 16 Balmoral Avenue. Mm -hmm. I can remember with some people named Masley. Hmm. You know, wife and husband, they have two girls and a boy. And that's where my mother used to work with them in the old colonial days. You know, we you know what them call it 21 shilling a, a week. Wow. You know, they call that one guinea. You know, the old colonial days were pound shilling and pence. Uh -huh. Yep. And you know, say so when you work in one guinea, which is 21 shilling, to, to feed. Take care of six boys my mother have. Six wow. of us, no girl. And I, 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 I am the second to the last. So we have four, four brothers in front of me. I am the second to the last. Wow. And so one... it was hard. It was very hard. On one for guinea, my yeah. mom. Jeez. That's what they call 21 shilling. Yeah. Wow. In the pound days, the old colonial days when Bustamante was president. Right. Wow. Of Jamaica. You know? So I grew up in Trenchtown, like I said, you know? My mm. bigger brother lied, Linton. He was living there in Trenchtown in the old tattoo days. The house them didn't build up yet. A lot of the houses didn't build up yet. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they, they have some houses really did build that time. You know, it was 12 shillings a month wow. with those rooms. So you have to go to the, um, the Mr. Sparling was Minister of Housing. So you have to go to Mr. Sparling if you want one of the houses to rent at 12 shillings. 12 shillings was a lot of money. People couldn't find it then, back in those days, the 12 shilling. Mm. So, you know, if, if you're not into a good job, then you have to call a thing named juggling. Uh -huh. right. You have to juggle, push and cat or hustling. Or, you know, carry people in the market of, when they come to town. You know, or you have to work as a gardener. He's one of those community where white people live up town in St. Andrew. You know, you have to do those type of work, you know, you don't matter what you have to do as long as you, you're working and, you know, God bless those uh, 12 shilling, pound shilling and pence. When you have one shilling, you can cook a pot of food. Mm -hmm. You can cook some dumpling and some banana, you know, and some chicken back. Poor people style, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, I was grew up in Bacawal with my brother. My mother took me to to Trench Town and we grew up in a Bacawal with him called Tivoli Garden. Mm -hmm. He didn't have that name yet. Those houses didn't build up yet with Eddie, Eddie Siago. He was the GLP for that area, Tivoli Garden. Right. But it was named Bacawal. Mm -hmm. mm. And it, back a wall divided in two segments. You have back a wall and you have Akiwak. Well, Akiwak is where all of the rest of them are in church. You know? Mm -hmm. the, the church of, uh, you know, Nayabingi. Right. Used to chant in them day, back in those days, you know? And what, uh, what year? what year is this, Winston, that, at this, at this that point? That year was into the 50s, man. Mm-hmm. 52, 53, 55, 56 coming down. You know, it was early days, you know. Mm -hmm. Well See? before Ska, all that, yes. So, Definitely. like I said, I grew up in a trench town, you know. And it's trench town. Um, so, my brother was living there in those old tattoo days. 
They call it trench town, but it was named Trench Pen. Because you'd have a man there named Mr. Pen. Hmm. You know, he was a Pocominia man. Oh, okay. You know, dance Pocominia. And right. he, he have a church there too. But he wow. passed away and after him passed, they built it up, you know. The mm -hmm. government built up the whole of that year you know, and, and changed the name to Trench Town. So, you know, I was living there, you know, up to the, now I know the number 19, 19th Fourth Street and I live also at 24th Fourth Street. And that's where I live up at, live and uh, is in that same yard, 24 4th Street, Alton Ellis, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Bonnie Wheelers, Lassell Perkin, Bonnie and Scully, Artens Ellis. All of those people you see in that yard. Wow. And 5th Street now, it didn't have no, it didn't have no gate. You can just walk through and go through 5th Street. And when you go to 5th Street, that's where Martin Plano lived. Hmm. The head for the Rastafari right them. Right. He was the head, the leader. He was an educated man, Rasta man. Right. And everybody as Rasta man, they come there and chant Rastafari drums, Naya Bingi drums, smoke herb and chant and praise God. So that's where Bob Marley used to be with that same man. He taught me to have my grow my natty dread. So, the, and so, so that was that from early. Man is early in the early sixties. Okay, sixty-two. Mm. So you were in your early twenties at that time, yeah. I was in my twenties and my thirties. You know. As every year you go, every year you become an a, a older, older than what you really is, you know. Mm -hmm. But I was telling you the history of what really did, what was going on at that time. So Martin Planner, he was a man that lived on Fifth Street all his life. Mm hmm and teach Amaric. And Bob Marley love him and him love Bob Marley, but he couldn't spread the message of Rastafari enough. Mm. He only could do what he can do, but to, to make the Rastafari movements go further than what it was. I'm glad that he met Bob Marley because Bob Marley spread the message and carried it to the ends of the world. Right. And that's what makes Rastafari movements become what it is today. Because it starts from right there with Martin Maplano. Right. So, so you've, you've really met seen... Alton Ellis. Sorry, go ahead. That's where I... I I met Alton Ellis was living on Fifth Street also. And at that time he was living he was singing as two of them was singing together as a, you would call it a duo. He and Ed, Eddie Parks. Mm -hmm. Alton and Eddie. Right. You know that first song? Oh wish I had a pair of wings. Over the prison walls I fly Until I find that one I love so well Mirel You know that song? I We do because we got a chance to back Alton Ellis um, in 2006 And he came in and, and he, he told us about that song And he wanted to open the set with that So he, he sang that... Um, for us but i didn't know it before then but that's yeah he told us about that being his first tune it's mm -hmm. beautiful and that was a beautiful rendition right there thank you yes it was a rock steady in our no skia it was a soft song yeah which would have called more like a ballad then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know but right. 
they 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 do a couple songs together, but as you as you as you continue uh, on the journey, they break up. For what reason? It is all about separation, and you know, at that time, people want to go further with them them career. So Eddie Parks leave and come to here America here. And he was looking a work a job, so he becomes a fireman hmm. in America here. And he didn't come back to Jamaica. Wow. So Alton Ellis was crying because you know them miss one another, known to the fact that they were singing for this long period of time and when one gone left the next one them feel out of place right you know for sure so i cannot speak for him but i know what was going on at that time because i was there you know mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if he was around him maybe they'll give you more he will talk to you and tell you more you know of the history why they break up you know right for whatever reason but i didn't know they break up and then uh, now in the same yard where we was living, a lot of people know me there and they hear me singing all the time, but I didn't get no break at that time. You know, I only was there and I love singing. And, you know, when I hear how oh, they was doing a lot of songs together and thing, and they break up, I said to him, was in the yard smoking some herb and then, People always say, like, oh, you can't sing anything, man. You know, say, ask Sultan Ellis if, if you could have found a group. So, you know, it really hit me, you know, and then I, go, I really go to him and ask him, you know, and then him say, well, we think about it. <laughs> That's what him said to me. I'm going <laughs> to think about it. All right. And then he come back about three weeks after that and say yes. <laughs> he, he took his nice. time to think about that. Yes, because he really want he want to continue music, but it was he going to come in into a different name and different style. Mm -hmm. And we have an ex Virginian named Edgar Garden. Mm -hmm. It was he was a good friend of Alton Ellis. He have a more baritone voice. And he said, okay, we're going to form the group. Me and, and Ega God, we call him Baby G. Mm -hmm. Baby G, yeah. Yes. He passed away after Halton passed away. Mm -hmm. So we formed the group with him, me, and Halton, and we call Halton and the Flames. Now people ask me, why you, you call it that name? Well, we have a theater in Jamaica named the Carib Theater in, in, in uh, Uptown. Mm -hmm. More Uptown, you know, Crossroads. And there was yeah, uh, Vajan, you have a man named Vajan. He passed away. I hardly hear anybody talk about him. Mm -hmm. But it's him first started to have uh, keep stage shows, live stage shows. At the Carib. At the Carib Theater. Yeah. And him do live show also at the Queen's Theater downtown on Spanish Town Road. And him put on some shows too again at the Majestic Theater also on Spanish Town Road. And him used to carry it maybe around into the country part like Spanish Town and, you know, some other place, country parts. Well, it's there always. I always go there and see Vajan putting on some shows with Derek Morgan. And he keeps shows with, uh, with, uh, he would put on shows, perform uh, some artists uh, like Derek Morgan, Bunny and Scully, hmm. and Bim and Bam. 
the comedy year. And, uh, yes, and and and, and Pluggy and Beryl. Oh wow! What did they do? And what that, was Pluggy and what was what did Pluggy and Beryl do? They were they dance. Oh, okay, they wow. dance. Wow. And and you have Pam Pam. He danced too. All right. And you you have Bim and Bam. There's coming like a comedian. Right. Right. Heard and, what, wasn't wasn't there. They, wasn't there a, a female dancer as well? Um, I forget her name, but she's on a couple of those posters as well. Um, Louis Bennett, Ma- Margarita, is it Margaret? Margarita. Remember. Yeah. She was, yes, but I, I think Margarita was uh, the girlfriend of um, Don Drummond. Drummond. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. Dan Drummond. Yeah. Okay, so you have a lot of. You would have all Derek Ma- Derek Harriet. Mm-hmm. And Stranger you Stranger have... Cole. Didn't Stranger Cole wasn't he on those? Stranger Cole. Yeah. And you would have a guy, this guy that said, Mule Train. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> Count... <laughs> Is it Count Something? Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna hate Cone. myself for forgetting this. Not Machuki, Cone. but um no, oh Cone. my gosh, it's count something. Mule trains is hit off the Derek. Yes. People thought that was Derek Morgan also. Um no. I what's his name? name count Cone something another. It starts with an S, I think. Shelly? <laughs> is it forget. Count Shelly? Is it no. Count Shelly? No. Uh, no, what? no, no. Count Shelly is a stone man. Okay, what's the um Mule Train? I'm mule train, look it up. Count something. Count yeah. Prince Mule Count Prince Miller. Prince Miller. Prince yeah. Miller, there you go. Count Prince Miller. There you go. There it is. Oh, people are saying in the comments here too. I mm. can just look there. Cool. Cole wow. Prince Miller. That's the only song, one of the, oh, the big song that he do. He never do a lot of song, mm-hmm. but he was very popular with that song because when he performed it, the whole place tear down. People love it. Wow, <laughs> man. You know. Mm-hmm. And did you get to so go to see I, these shows? Were you there hanging out, like seeing the shows? I was just there hanging out. Nice. Wow. They, I, I wasn't singing yet. Right. All those times. You know, it's, 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 it's all about learning mm-hmm. what's going down at that time. Mm-hmm. We are so, misconcerned. Right. But so you and Alton had, had formed the, the group. And so did you, were you guys aspiring to go down there and play at the Carib? Was that what was uh, going on? No, that time... I didn't. I wasn't performing with Alton Ellis yet because oh, see, he was singing as Alton and Eddie. Oh, mm-hmm. I thought that was still Alton and Eddie time. Okay. Yeah, it's long after that. Now, then, when we formed the group, we go to to Drew Creed Studio as for audition. In those days, now, Drew Creed didn't even have studio yet. Mm-hmm. Treasure Hill didn't build yet. We are he will record you. But when when I start to go to Drew Creed this studio, if I still never do no recording yet, because it was a man is a musician. I forgot his name now. I will soon tell you his name. Barbara Brooks. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Great horn. Trumpet player. Yes. Barbara Brooks took me there. And and just to look and see how this studio, what's going down. Right. But Drew Creed used to do recording at, at the uh, RGR, radio, Jamaica Radio Station. Mm hmm. That's why they changed the name uh, to, uh, from Arja to that name, but it was uh, Jamaica Region Fusion Days. Where you have, why they call it that? Because they was, it was long before, before, you know, the early, it was about not the early 50s, they opened that uh, radio station run, and then now they uh, call it. RGR Region Fusion because they only have one one box. The radio was one box with one knob. 
<laughs> wow. wow. One knob, turn on and turn off. That's it. Ah uh, yes, that's it. And it was wow. a board, a board. You make out a wood. Mm -hmm. So people always leave it in the sun. And then just leave it. They must leave it in in the rain. Huh. Some some people make a little stand and put it on the, the light post that anybody pass and can hear it. And right. people put you know them people them because them little side side shops suffer with the people that poor people just make up some little small little ghetto shop. And they put it there that when you come you can hear some music. Mm -hmm. So that little one box used to box and kick all about. Jeez, the original sound system right there, huh? It come like a sound box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you can fling it and it and you know it have one little knob and it have a one little a small like a 10 home speaker. Wow. Jeez. Inside of it. Probably couldn't hear any bass. You don't have huh? no you don't have no holy pal no wiring. Maybe two little wire just to make it play. Yeah. So that's why they call it RGR Rigi Fusion Network. Okay. After that, they change the name because they get to start to expand bigger, mm -hmm. and they employ more people inside there. But Drew Creed used to go down the recording, and they be used to record again at a place named Federal Record, named Ken Curry. Right, right. Mm -hmm. he, he's the owner for the federal record where you see Bob Marley bio. They sell it out to Bob Marley and change the name to Tough Gang. Right, federal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, federal recording. And you have another studio owner. He and Eddie Siago. He. Eddie Siago was of uh, shares in there with Byron Lee. Mm -hmm. And they have that recording company also. So people used to go there and do recording like Drew Creed and, and Coxon. Mm -hmm. So that's what he Before was doing. Before them built up their studio. Right. Mm -hmm. and that, so that's what he was doing when you and Alan first went to 60s. check in. In the early 60s. Right. And that's where they started to do recording. Until one day, Drew Creed said he wanted to build up his own studio. Nope. Oh. oh. Well, Did you see? Yeah. these things do happen. Um, maybe his phone died. Maybe the phone died. Maybe the connection died. Several well, things. Because he's calling from... Uh, Seattle. He, Seattle, yeah. Yeah. Well, we lost him for a second, but hopefully he'll sign right back on. Um I that's a trip it. that's a trip i mean i was gonna ask him you know obviously at this point you have cox and you have duke reed who have yet to have their own stables and it's like okay they see the potential here you know they're recording right stuff it's not stopping them you know they're they're assuming the producer role at this point it's like okay we're going to this other studio to record our stuff but mm -hmm. right around the corner we're gonna you know why go pay and why go to this other space? Where and we, what an you know. what an amazing time to be like an emerging young singer artist. You know what I mean? Because you're yeah. you're you're Alton Ellis and you're Winston Jarrett and you're Bob Marley and like all these all you know at the same just the, everything just building up like that at the same time. It's like all the ingredients just combined at the right time. You know, definitely and to be, true. And someone like and I'm I'm sure I'm sure we can get uh, Winston back on here in a second, but. Yeah, you know, just to, to to talk to somebody like that who is there, at, you know, for the that, development of all that stuff. My is, God, in 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 twenty twenty one, to be able to talk to a gentleman that is yes there yeah. before, not just talking to you about the days in Studio One, you know, or this is before 
uh, Treasure Isle was even a thing, you know. Right. Definitely one of the things I wanted to ask Winston was, I mean, you, you know, is someone like Duke Reed talking about his aspirations to have his own studio? Is he, you know, someone like Coxon, are they, are they seek? Yeah, you know, who knows what's going through their head at that point? Are they secretive? Are they, are they, are they already at competition with each other, even though they don't have their own studios? Exactly. It's so, the dynamics. There's so many, you know, different ways it could it could roll out. Our friend Chris Murray is in the comments. He says, "What does RJR stand for?" I think it's Radio Jamaica something. I think that's the name of the station. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. I've, yeah, I was looking it up. So. Um, so I mean, you got to imagine, yeah. The, the only place that they can actually record music was places that were rec recording audio, you know, or broadcasting things. That's which is a trip, because I, right, I think from right. that out of necessity came different producers to go on and and you know build their own studios. Exactly. Um, well, he's gonna. I just got a text from his manager that he's gonna log back on here. So everybody, okay, cool. Stick with it. You know, we mentioned we're moving away from the live format to a pre-recorded, and this is, you know, this is one of the reasons. It's so we can. This is just. This is. This comes with the territory of doing, uh, right. interviews where three people are in three different places. Um, yeah, but man, I mean, Devin, you're always welcome here. You can come and. <laughs> eh, I don't well, know what what it is. Devin does. Oh, there you go. Like Nina. Nina knows. Let's see. Radio Jamaican Rediffusion. There we wow. go. Wow. Wow. Well, there you go. Thank you, Nina. And by the way, Nina, we gave you a little shout out at the beginning of the show today. We t told people about the uh, Mighty Cloud Burst thing yes. you got coming up, which we're, Nina we, we is, are very excited about. Nina I actually, great. I checked it out and she came with it, man. The, um, nice. What's that tune, dude? Uh, the Rita Marley tune or the uh, Jackie plays at the beginning. Uh, Call on me. Call on you. I forget the tune. I showed it to you. Remember that long time ago? I don't want to do it on a side story. Remember, Devin, a long time ago? Uh, I don't know if you remember this. Did you I wasn't in Northridge at the time, and we just like, let's go get uh, 12 hour of Corona. And we were chilling in your parents' backyard, and uh, we were just listening to reggae music. And it was like after a DJ show or something like that. I forget. But I remember showing you, I think, the Rita Marley oh, tune. Call, call wow. to me. Oh, it's a man, call tune. to me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, I do remember that. We were sitting down the, in the front yard. Oh, man. That's Jackie with a wicked solo in the middle. Yeah, that's it, baby. From Oh, that tune's wicked. So Nina has, I mean, geez. Heavy. That's just such a good That's such a great tune. Uh, Nina starts her set off with that one. Oh, dude, that was also the same night you showed me. That was the first time I heard that. And also you show me another one. I think it's Play Play by the Whalers. Oh, dude. All they do is just play, play, play. The Rocksteady tune. Oh, Yeah. It sucks because we can't, one. like, when you do these things, the one thing the internet has not figured out yet is how to let people in different locations, like, sync up. So we can't, like, sing these together. So it always sounds oh. whack. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I've learned that when you're trying to, like, just anything. Like, if someone's doing something and you try to sing along, it's like, no, nah, that's nah, it's not working the way you think it's working. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's going to be like, it's going to be like, you know, whatever. 2040 and then look we'll look back and be like oh God. you remember when you couldn't do that remember when you right. couldn't go up i mean all it really takes is it going to some third party location right and then getting synced and some kind of auto yes it's not too hard to imagine like, how that would work yeah but uh we'll figure it out and we'll become millionaires let's do it there you go well i'm too lazy oh yeah how about that I don't yeah that, that was right i showed you that tune as well yeah i don't have a, a lot of great of tunes ambition when it comes to uh inventing those two tunes that we just described, I could imagine they're not easy to get a hold of. Um, oh, for sure. Those are, I, but who so knows? Nina has maybe, called maybe, to me, maybe, is what you said? Yeah, Call to Me Ooh. is the one that, uh, that we were talking about that she started. That's a tune, man. It's great. I mean, T Tiny T, like I said, everyone, we, we mentioned it earlier in the show, but go check it out. The Cox and Tribute, Tiny T, Mighty Cloudburst. He, he's, mm -hmm. he's so cool. Um, I, I encourage everyone to go and just look at his backlog of videos that he puts out because – He's got so much personality and he's got a nice little setup and he's got above everything. He's got great records. So um, you got to check that out. And then Nina just tears it up. She comes with the heat always, always. like how, how, how are you going to do that, man? Me and me and David call ourselves DJs, record collectors. And then it's just like Nina comes with like tunes that because me and Devin will DJ and, and we, there's times where like Devin will DJ and I'm like, oh, I never heard that one. I never heard that one. And Devin, same thing. He's like, oh, check that out. Yeah. You know? But like when Nina comes on, it's like education. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's like I can't even. Yeah, I gotta pay attention. Right, it's schools in session for sure. In the in the old Rocksteady Lounge days, that's that's when I first. Oh, met all Nina the best. Just watched her watched her DJ and um, 
just yeah every time it's like whatever you know because like it's so cool like especially in la there's just subsets of it and you know i happen to be and i think you're kind of like this too like i've always been into just the whole spectrum of jamaican music you know Mm -hmm. um just from from ska right through to like modern stuff although you know I, i i do tend to lean old school um but there are other people who really just focus in. And I think, you know, Nina, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm fair in describing Nina as somebody who really focuses in on the, you know, rock steady and early reggae and ska too, like th- those areas, you know, with a hard, mm-hmm. with a cutoff, you know, in the very early seventies. And the cool thing about that is like some of those DJs really just, they have some amazing stuff. Okay. It looks like we have Mr. Winston back. Let me try to bring him in. Yes, sir. Mr. Jarrett. Yes, sir. You're back. Yeah. All right. Cool. You're back. We held down the fort in your absence. Yeah, we did. The the, the crowd is uh waiting was waiting patiently. Technology is out. know nothing about it. Oh, it's all good. We're, we're we, back. We, we barely do either. Yes, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, you were you, you were talking about you know uh, Duke Reed and Cox and cutting records uh, even before they had their own studios, respectively Studio One and Treasure Isle. Um, did did they talk much like did you did you know them on a personal level did they talk much about their aspirations on having their own studios one day yes that's what i'm saying joe creed said that okay he wanted to build him own studio a board studio mm-hmm. up on top of his business place at 13 band street nice if you know anything about joe creed you know he was an old policeman right he always he carried a gun that. right right he always yeah. had a gun yeah Right. <laughs> you know about that part. Yeah, but please tell us. <laughs> please tell us more. Yeah, elaborate, please. He own a, he own a, a business place at 13 Band Street, and it was a liquor store. Right. A huge liquor store. He don't employ enough people. Uncle Imam is his wife, Miss Reed, and, and him, Joe Creed. You know? Mm-hmm. But he... He, I think there you go. He did uh, doing business first, and he bank up. He bank up, but he he he, he couldn't do no business anymore. Mm, the liquor store bankrupt. He, mm. But he, they they uh, they bought this lotto, lotto. Um, right, lottery, lottery. And he win. I didn't know that. I didn't know that part. Yeah. Yes, he win a big money, and it that starting back in a business with his wife. That's my plan too. Mega millions, and he baby. Buy a, he bought a, a copper truck. Wow. You know, and then he he he, he start to, to um he own a, a sound system. You know, with uh, mm-hmm. some huge box. In those days, you know, they fire off about 15,000 watt. Wow. When it clean, the earth move. <laughs> Man. And you have the, this bottom bottom end, which is the, the is is the, what carry the base. Right. And and you have some box you put on top of the boxes, them name, they call that the top end. Mm-hmm. And he, he, they mark them joy, joy box. You take about four or five man to lift it up. One box. Wow. Man. And imagine and hearing that now, and going from your going from your little box with the one switch to then hearing Duke Reed's just earth shattering sound system. It must have been amazing. Yeah, but he started with one little box first. Mm, all right. There about mm. uh, a, a 15 ohm speaker in it. And him always have that small little box and him hang it up right time shop there. Coming from in at the shoulder and the card come down with a box come right up right uh, at the door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where anytime it, this this the, it, him do our music upstairs at the studio, the engineer named Smithy put it through that little box so he could hear it downstairs. But it's only the artists them that record up there. Him saying don't want no whole heap of rec- um, artists. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Because it, if it get out, the song them get out of control, him not can be able to control them. Mm. So him didn't want no whole of artist like Paxson. He mm-hmm. do want just as much what he knows so well than he can handle. Mm. So we start an addition there with Alton and the Flames, and that's me and Ega Garden. And him have um, Justin Hines. Yeah. Wow. And he would have Umpty Dumpty Morris. Eric, Eric Monty Morris, right? Blackbird sat on a wall. One named Peter, the other named Paul. Whoa, you know that song? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Eric, Eric Monty Morris, right? And Eric Monty Morris. Yeah. Great tune. And he and he, he have like the techniques and he would have like Slim Smith. Mm-hmm. But he great. don't record a lot of song one time. He m- maybe only record about three artists at a time. Mm-hmm. You know? And and after then everybody have to carry them book in them in them hand. And the guitar and cuttings. Yeah, a guy named Cuttings. He he was the man that do the addition. Only on Sunday. Wow. Sunday from about twelve o'clock go up till about three. Addition. And those artists that them them pick, them send them upstairs. That's where the studio is. Right. So did did you a do an audition? Book. Yes, I was there too. And it's so we get addition with Ryan Alton Ellis and Stranger Cole, Justin Hines, and they have a, a group named the Three Tops. Yeah, I've got something by them. And then we do some recording of Gladstone Anderson and piano. Mm. And you have Winston Wright and keyboard. And you would have uh, Jackie Jackson and bass, mm-hmm. and John Bago and drums, and you have Lynn Tate and guitar. That's a band. <laughs> you just mentioned you it. just mentioned all superheroes right there. That's crazy. And then you would have Tommy McCook, mm-hmm. Bobby Ellis, and Marcus. Mm-hmm. Trombone. Yes. The supersonics in, in in a sense, right there. Right. That's the supersonics. But as time goes on, sometimes it change drums. You know, when drum bigger is not there, it might use that like a youth name Tingling. Mm-hmm. And when you hear the story about when 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 he was not playing the drum the right way, like he was playing tuku tuku puk, tuku tuk tu, and Duke said, No man, don't play that way. You want to toof 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 toof. He wasn't playing that way, play something different, like I said. And you could come out and check out him going and boy, 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 in the, in the ceiling. Wow. And thing like catch him free and feel when he made a shot, him feel like him get him a feel up himself and if him get shot. Then he run out and say him come him soon coming going to pee. And he didn't come back. <laughs> we had another guest on tell us that story. I don't know if it was Val Douglas, Basie Val Douglas. Somebody told us that that same story. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, the issue wow. goes on. Yeah. You know, until now, Duke it was a man that artist them now. He told you that he don't responsible for your um, your publishing. You must find and register your publisher by yourself if you are the writer. So he he didn't really take away nobody's 
have infringed upon nobody's rights. But Cox can do that. Mm. Mm. He take away all the rights. And he, he say if you if you're not gonna give him a part of it, the publishing, you you cannot do no recording for him. Well. That come like a gangster is him. Mm. To me. For sure. You know, at that time. But if you want to do recording, then you have to you have to sign to give him a part of the publishing. But eventually he'll take away everything from you further down the line. Mm -hmm. You know? And Drew Creed and Coxon couldn't agree. They were they were in war all the time. Well. Wow. Because Coxon have a special sound. He should have a special sound. Different from for, 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 uh, Treasure Hill. Right. For Drew Creed. Coxon sound Coxon should build up out of wall. You know, concrete wall. Mm -hmm. And the padding was so good. He have a professional man come from the States here where Billy mm. the shooter like a motor. Mm. But Juki shooter was built up out of, of out of board. And the padding was also good, but a different sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they 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 said do, Cox always said he don't want the artist to go down a juke with and record. They were jealous over them one another. Hmm. And Juke said the same thing, he don't want you to go for Cox and go, go do, take him songs and go do it for, for Cox. Hmm. So the two of them always are bad bad man. You could have a, have a set of bad guys that protect him. And also Cox also have some bad man that protect him too. If you go in trouble, keep him record or want to take it away and all kind of stuff. You have those bad man to come and beat you up. Mm -hmm. Wow. Also Drew Creed. Because you don't know so him is an old policeman. Right. I'm a one long range gun, nine yeah. man, and I'm a one another one out in them holes that's chopping on him foot. I'm a, a belt on him, full up a, a, a shot. Wow. I'm a another one him holding him hand also with him long range. And if you come and steal anything from him, it's gonna, they don't know it's gonna go. Wow. I'm, go, I'm gonna beat you up. I'll make you have to pay for anything you take up. He drinks them. Uh, D and G company come and uh, distribute beer and stout. And he on the two sides of the road at Band Street. On the right hand side, and in, and over on the left hand side, him also a Boxes of liquors also when the truck come and empty out everything beer that him harder and you have a, a part of it is uh empty buckles uh, people buy from him from the store and uh, he told if you buy the anything you buy from him um beer or stout you have to bring back the bottle when you want so you can get the exchange. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He can he can exchange the empty bottle and give you a beer for it. You know, people keep in dance and have them like a shop, them come down by wholesale. And they can go back and, and do retail. You know, so and over upon the left hand side, a band street you have him church. A revival church. Do could also do Christian songs. Mm-hmm. And certain day, we're slow, you know? Mm -hmm. Also, Cox do Christian songs too. So, 
The first song that we did at Drew Creek Shooter with me and Alton is with me was a song named Papa Tully was a preacher. Ooh. That's a that's a heavy tune. Yes. Because him don't like Rudy. Yeah. It's best to be a goodie. And something gonna burn you. You know? That was the first one, huh? Yeah, the first song that I did. Wow. Yeah. That's a great song. And then we do an a song named Rudy at Large. And then we do Cry Tough. Yeah. And then we do an next one named Blessing of Love. And then we know we do Ain't That Love in You. Man, these are all hits. Yeah, classics. Yeah. Man. And then we do another one named You Better Get Ready. Come do rock steady. Hey. You got to do this new dance, open your ready. You got to do it just like Uncle Freddy. If you don't know, shake your head, rock your body line, shake your shoulders, everything is fine, and sing. Oh, 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 was a number one. Yeah. And so would the three of you, uh, the, the vocalists in the group, would you guys all write these tunes together? Yes. Nice. Yes. We sit down on sidewalk in a trench town, especially at night time, when people go to them bed. And we rehearse right through in, actually in the night. Nice. Mm. You know? And then we do... Dance Crasher. That was a number one hit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dance Crasher. Oh, 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 Dance Crasher. No, 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 please don't make a fuss. Please don't make a fuss. Don't take a knife, take another fella's life. Be a clean fighter, a prize fighter, instead of a dance crasher. Number one again. Mm. And well, go ahead, Devin. Well, I was going to ask, like, when you guys were writing those lyrics together, was everyone just kind of equally putting in on, on the lyrical ideas, or was there was there one person who would come with more lyrics more often? Sometimes we write, a, we come up with the lyrics. Uh, you know the lyrics of the song, and then it don't it never it don't it, it don't it don't sound good. Mm -hmm. So we change it. Many times we, we never have a hit song a song right out from top to bottom. Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a work in progress. But we keep we, we keep working on it until it it, it come and sound the real. Eventually, we want it to sound because if you don't do that, and when you go to Drew Queen to record, you have to rehearse again with Gladstone and this and the piano there. And sometimes you have tr problems with the harmonies, so we have to keep re rehearse and rehearse and rehearse until you get because you know. When a tree man singing, you have the lead natural and you have to have a top end, which is the arm on the section, a top end. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to sing. You're going to have a baritone voice and you're going to have a falsetto. Mm -hmm. And when we sing, you have to hear the blending together on the right note. Right. Uh, uh, if you don't do that, then we're going to sound off key. And did the three of you already have experience with harmonies before you linked up, or were you kind of all learning that together? We learned that as we go along, like mm -hmm. I said. But we still have an idea how 
it's supposed to be. And you have to rehearse until that eventually come. Yeah. You know? Because them say a man never know the right thing until you do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So you know what you want. You have an idea of, of, of what singing is all about because we listen to foreign songs them very hard and we love the foreign song like many of the foreign singers them from Motown they are all in Jamaica play on the radio and Drew Creed always come to America and buy the the, the r and and bring it back also Coxon. Coxon used to work on farm work in America here. So every time he come and come back to Jamaica and bring back a lot of those songs. Mm -hmm. And he give it to the artists them to listen. That's why you find a lot of the artists them, you find some of them all sing over foreign songs. Right. Mm -hmm. Even Bob Marley. Oh, yeah, for sure. He loved Curtis Mayfield and the Impressions. Mm -hmm. He loved them ba very bad. And if you even some of the, the melody from the, the, um, the Impression with Bob Marley, you can hear in the music that he does. Mm -hmm. That's true. They love the female singers, them. Like Aretha Franklin and all those... American R and B. Even Joe Creed come to America and he bring back Fox Domino to Jamaica. And he he used to uh, love Fox Domino music. He bring him back to Jamaica to perform. Was there was there any artist specifically American artist that you? gravitated towards that you personally winston jarrett liked this american artist there is so much of them there is so much but where me is concerned i love them but if you listen to most of my song then what i sing is originally written by me mm -hmm. but i learned from those foreign uh, um, artists. I learn a lot from Curtis Mayfield. I love him bad. Mm -hmm. I even get the name from James Brown. Come to Jamaica and perform. James Brown and the Flames at the Curb Theater. Oh, yeah. And that's where I mm -hmm. get the name from, The Flames. Nice. And I didn't want to put another name to it. Now I go get it from the Bible, The Righteous. The name Righteous. It's right. a great combination. What a cool name. Yeah. I know, so good. And I take that name and call it The Righteous Flames. And when he... After I leave Alton Ellis, right. migrate to England, and leave us together, the harmony singers. And I said to myself, so one day, after Alternates migrated to England and, and he didn't come back. And then a lot of people were saying that everything crashed. Because he said, we, we cannot go on without him. Because he was everybody loved him as the leader. And I said to myself, I, I read in the Bible where Jesus and the 12 disciples. And I said, when Jesus go up into the mountain to preach, to, uh, to pray to, to his father, the 12 disciples were there with him. And he called them, and when he, they didn't go with him up in the mountain to pray. And when he come back, he find them fall asleep. 
And I, rem- I read that little part in the, in the Bible and I learned from that and I said, man, I said to myself, because, you know, sometimes we already have to talk to myself and we have to answer myself. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. Yeah. It was hard for you to do that, but I said, I don't want to be a follower no more. I want to lead, be a leader. Because mm-hmm. if God himself said, well, him call unto strong men to lead. Be a leader. So I said to myself, that's what I want to do. Because when I was singing with Alton Ellis, I was only carrying harmony. But now I have to become a leader. I start to lead my little group I found now after all Alton Ellis depart from us. And I take up the group now and I start to lead with Edgar Garden, and I have a next guy named Juna Green. Mm-hmm. And I call it the Winston Jarrett. No, I didn't call it that name. I call it the Righteous Flames. But after, as, as, as I start to go along, I find I have problem with, uh, with the harmony, man, like Edgar Garden and Juna Green. They didn't want to come along with me. Many times when I call them, they don't want to come. Hmm. They don't want to work without them get paid. And I didn't really have no money to pay them. Sometimes I give them my money if I have it, but I, didn't, I couldn't keep up with it all the time. And it was embarrassing to me because I want my career to go further. And I wish to, to carry them with me all along, but... They wasn't they was strong enough in themselves. So they want pay and I really couldn't do that. So I started the recording and I put the lead arm and put on the lead first and I do come back and do the two arm and it by myself. Mm-hmm. And enough of the song them instead I call it the righteous I call it Winston Jarrett. Right. What was the first song that was credited as Winston Jarrett? The first song I did was I Was Born to Be Love and Studio One. Heavy. At the, at the, the, the uh, Soul Vendors back home mm-hmm. right. with Jackie Matu. It's Rocksteady, right? Yes, Rocksteady. And it was one of my biggest hit song written by me. But on the label, if you look, look down, it didn't give me no credit. Mm. You're gonna put my name there as uh, me as the singer, but if we put Winston Jarrett as the writer. No, in, 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 they figure out more that is a foreign song that I do over. Mm. Ah, it was so good, right? It was so good. Mm-hmm. So, in take away my um, my publishing, but. It's so much thing to learn to make you be very famous and make money in other business because if you're not making money in other business, I don't see what sense it make. Right. And those days, we didn't get in no money. We were going to sing for girls. Mm-hmm. It's funny that Alton Alice, when, when we performed with him, he did mention that as well, right, Devin? He mentioned that he did. He's, in the early days, you were performing for pretty much the fame of your colleagues, you know? Yeah, because that was what going on in Jamaica with we the old artists. A lot of we the old artists. And again, we didn't know the rights. Because you have a thing in publishing, and you have another one, you see in protection, your mechanical copyright. Right. If you don't, that's where you're going to get, that's what, what, that's where you're going to get what they don't get. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You're going to get what they don't get. You know, and if you don't not make no money to publishing is one of the biggest thing for an artist. 
Yeah. Copyright. And a lot of artists, even still, even today, a lot of artists don't really wrap their heads around that, you know? Right. Up till today. I used to go around and when I when I get to know, I find a man. I know I I going to tell you before that. I know Siago, Edward Siago have a publishing company. Mm-hmm. And when I find out that they have the publish publishing company up Beach Road Avenue, right, right where um, that roadside of RGR. And I go up there and them say, if you come back, come register two days after. And I go and tell Al- Alton Ellis about it. And he said, yes, we're going to go up there. And the man, when I go up there, him, him, go, him come and Edgar Garden come. Me come, but when you go into the room with Bob the Granger there, you know, Bob the Granger is Siago second. That woman, mm-hmm. and they brought me out. When they asked him, who and who into the group? I can say him, Edgar Garden, and him brother, Leslie Ellis. He's a tailor. And he does sing more than one little harmony, but I can destroy him, brother, them say, blood thicker than water. Mm. So he put in him, brother, in and get me out. Wow. And him, I him, him tell him I was no part of the group. Jeez. And it was like the world was tumbling down on me like a rock and a hard place. Mm-hmm. And one day I hop a shoot one and sit down inside eh, with a, with Larry Marshall and one of the artists. And I see a car drive up and stop at the gate. But I couldn't see no who was into the car because it was tilt. Until I think Stitch, DJ Stitch, come and say, Winston Jarrett, is you the man come to you know? Mm. And when I go to the gate and I mean, me lick on the glass and then wind on the glass, and I look, I see a man ask me if I know who, who he is. I said, No, sir. He said, It's him named DS Cat. Him is the manager, he have the office down Duke Street. And I must come down there and check him to register my song them. And if we know any artists who want to register them songs, I must tell them about it. And I tell a whole heap of artists. Mm. I, I, I did really tired of telling people. <laughs> and they run me and say, well then, me love white people too much. I'm a defend white people. Me was a defender for white people. And they run me and they now listen to me say what me I talk about is some hold on and take away. Mm-hmm. But I go down there and I tell Elga Garden and I carry with me and we go down there and Mr. Scott give me some farm to follow up. I'm full up the farm and I'm sh- teach me how and show me how to, to register my song them. You know? Mm. And how me to full up the farm. And that's how me, me becomes a... Uh, that's how me becomes... A registered me, artist. Register my song them through the yeah. PRS. Wow. PRS means Performing Rights Society. Mm-hmm. In England... The head office is in England, but you have affiliated office down at Jamaica where you can join. And then me, 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 um, me find out that you have a singer where um, was um, setting up a, 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 another publish, publishing company in Jamaica named CCO. That is, that is a mechanical copyright. 
And I also joined that too. And so, many, many years after them, them come together in England, the CCO had mechanical rights and performing rights come together in a one organization. And over 40 year, odd years now, I'm a member of that those same registering mm. company. So that's how I become a member and start to record my songs. I may record over 500 songs. Wow. And I'm, and I'm getting my little royalty. Nice. That's great. To, to you have to extend, extend your, your knowledge and, 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 and work hard and, and find out certain things and learn certain things. You know, the music in the, I used to do a lot of producing for myself, you know? And I know about how to do regarding the quality and how it to sound. They didn't have a, another thing in Jamaica where you have to do clean recording. Some ideas you now you listen to some young artists, you hear them cursing a holy pop, bad word and talk a holy pop, bad things in a them message. Mm -hmm. In those days, you couldn't do that. In the 60s. Right. They farm, they farm a thing with about six people come together and form a little organization. When you do a recording, they listen the, 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 the lyrics mm. and they listen the type of the, or the, the bass line and the drum and everything in the music and if it come to they pass it, give it a, a mark of 100% or 75% or even 50% but lesser than that they throw it away couldn't play on the radio who was in oh okay it was a uh... Who was in charge of that organization to just make those decisions? Artists and artists come together. Okay. Because they didn't have a problem with that. Good quality. Good representation. Wow. Good singing. They they have you call it a panel of judges. Mm-hmm come together and form that little organization for quality. What year was that? Did that happen? 1967. Okay. Wow. So I, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, speaking of that time period, there's a couple tunes that, that I, I really wanted to get your, your thoughts on and, and ask you about them. One of them is, one of them is a tune in the Rocksteady era that I think you did a studio one called Ease Up. I do that song written by me. Right. For Struda one. And with the, the bad treatment that I used to get by Struda one. You know, when I do this, Coxon beat up a whole for artist, a musician. Beat you up. Really? Physically beat you up? F physically fighting. Wow. Wow. Downbeat. And that's how we make that song half a yeah. downbeat. I, I make that song directly half of him because he don't know why all me come up with that lyrics. Mm. So, you, so you were talking about you were telling Coxon to ease up, you're hurting my pride, that tune. Right. That's great. Could you sing a little bit of that? All for you us? need is and I say all you need is love. Could you sing a little bit of that for people who don't know it? He's a boy, you're hurting my pride. He's a, you're hurting my pride. All you need is love, love, love. All you need is love. Oh, oh, oh. I know, yeah. Oh, oh. oh. 
you should have known. You've got your money, I've got my song. You can stay, I must go on. Ease up, boy, you're hurting my pride. Rum, bum, bum, bum. Rum, bum, bum, bum. Me write that. That is such I a heavy song, it. man. Love yeah. it. And I just I just want to say I never knew I love that song so much. I've known that song from when I first started listening to Jamaican music. And I never knew you wrote that about Coxon. That that makes so much sense now. I'm gonna listen to that song in a different way. Yes. And it it was I forgot what the man would release it, the song by itself. And he did not. He put it at the flip side of evening time with Jackie Mato. That's right. Mm. That's a, yeah. That's what I I have it here like it's a little it mine's a bl a blank copy but yeah it's uh, evening time on one t on one side and ease up on the other but I bought wow. it because I was instrumental rock steady with Jackie Matu. That's right yeah mm -hmm. but I bought it because I was looking for ease up and I was like oh it's got Jackie Matu on the other side nice but ease up is is the jam yeah and he hold on my career and I cried every day and night that the man would push me but it's like he have too much artists where you know he can't concentrate on everybody like I tell you Juki didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Coxon have sung that he even himself don't remember. Right. Who remember mm -hmm. those songs that when it's time to come to release? You have King Stitch. Hmm. And you have any, another woman there named Edith Cumberland. Mm. Those two people is the two people that remind Coxon about which song to release. He have a, some he have some big thick book, like when you go to courthouse. And every song that do, done, as you go along, they have to write it down and keep it registered in the book. Because at that time he didn't have no computer. Hmm. Right, right. No computer. He, he didn't have at that time. So mm -hmm. to keep to keep re those record, you have to write them down. Right. Keep notes. Mm -hmm. That's why everything Coxon do him keep note of it so he can really remember. Mm -hmm. But that lady used to sing as Keith and Enid. Oh, okay. Enid Cumberland. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So she worked there too and did singing. Yes. And she have a kid for Dong Beat. Oh wow. Oh. Dirty dog. <laughs> there's another yeah. tu there's another tune I wanna because we actually see we're gonna have to have you back because we haven't even gotten past the early years yet and we're running out of time. There's another song I wanted to ask you about from that era, and it's a tune called Wreck Up a Pagan Heart. Oh my God. That song is just wow. It's one of the wickedest songs that. Yep. You know, don't be, like I tell you before, and I will say, say don't be, never, never push me as the number one artist. Right. I was like a underdog. Because you have it on the list as the number one. He would have John Walt, Delroy Wilson. Mm -hmm. You have, you, you name them. All of the number one artists, them, that's the artists that him push all the while. Mm. But for many artists, and like me said, is the song itself of a common cell. Right. I'll fight to own weight. Mm -hmm. And people have to really love the song. Man like her, Ken Booth, he would push that man. He loved Ken Booth back. Right, right, right. Mm. But we, as it, some little artist, man, is a song itself have to come and, and, and sell it on its own. So did did wreck up a pagan heart sell on its own? Yes. Nice. He released that song, but when he 
Don't be. You, I do a lot of song for Struda one. And it's when since me come I'm, I'm married in and live in America and start to travel, then I find out what don't be do. Release some of the song them and different label in America and release them in England. Mm -hmm. But they don't re nobody know them in Jamaica. Right. And he have so much labels that he would put them on. That's true. Mm -hmm. And then he would sell them out to and give it to different people like Trojan Bamboo. and all them people there. Eh? Oh, yeah. And you never heard it. I sing a song named Seven Letters mm -hmm. by Brooke Benton. This is my last letter, dear. You know that? I do yeah. that song. I, I know the Derek Morgan version. Are are you singing with Derek? Is I that is that before Derek Morgan? Before no. before Derek, yeah. Derek Morgan and do a, a version of it very good too. But I never know. Cox to sell out that song to Trojan, and I see on a label where I never know about that label. Mm -hmm. And so I get to find out that don't be sell it out and give it to some people. And it was on Trojan label in England. And of course, you never saw any money from that. I never saw it. Right. And I never heard it back from. I do a lot of songs for, for one studio and I never heard them back. Right. If we are telling say, boy, I'm going to try it. And if it go on with anything. And every time you go to Downbeat, I me ask him, beg him, ask him for your money. He said, boy, Jack's not now go on, you know. Jeez. Jackson. What and he said, why go on skip? Not now go on, you know. In my weird pan, in my weird pan um Chris Whitewell. Mm-hmm. He said, Chris Whitewell will in my wallet for money. I'm a weird power when the money comes so he can give some of the artists a little money. And it never that it never come true. When I really hear it, it's gonna come true, the only man must get a little money out of it as and a Ken Boot. Mm -hmm. And when Ken Boot get the money him cry. Why him cry? Because him couldn't believe so don't be to really call him and give him something. Wow. That's so, it's so disappointing to hear for, for us, you know, because, I mean, not to mention yourself, but just like people who love the music of Studio One, who listen to Winston Jarrett, you know, doing a tune like Wreck Up a Pagan Heart or doing like Fear Not, those tunes they are just, we love them so much. And it's so, it's so, just every time it's so frustrating and disappointing to hear that the artists really never got their, their just dues from those mm -hmm. tunes, you know? Or anything at all, really. It's just disappointing. What was it different? Was it much different? You mentioned Duke Reed. You mentioned I know you recorded with with Scratch Lee, Lee Perry. I do a whole a song for Lee Perry, and I do a lot of song for Prince Buster. And were they different in the sense of compensation and like what you would get? Were they more fair than nothing? Coxon? No fairness. That's, that I don't know the what theme. the fairness with nobody, no producer in a Jamaica. Mm. Them is all reducers. I don't call them a producer no more. I call them reducers. Redu mm. <laughs> Reduction. Yeah. Because nobody deal with Winston Jarrett fear. I never get a fear deal yet in my career. Mm. Never. When it comes to Lee Scratch Perry, I never even get a dollar from that man. Wow. Prince Buster, I never get a dollar. Jeez. It's many, many years after I do some soon for Prince Buster. I was down Harry Street on I'm shop. And he see me and call me and say, come on, my come on. I'm going to I shop. He say one day talk to me. And I think he's a money the man I give me here the man say to me. He remember say me to do some tune for me in the early 60s. About 62, 63. Them time we never get independent yet. Mm -hmm. 
And him say, that like me come sing them over. We said, we said, Prince, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, you didn't pay me the first time. Mm. He said to him, say, me, you, me look like me born pan hall full day. But me never born pan hall full day. Why you think me not really do a thing like that? After you angle me so bad from the first time. Then what you believe you going to do me, you going to kill me now. Because I'm not going to do it. And what did he say? How did what he take that? Said, hey, how did he take that? Him never, him, him, him just walk away and go away to go in the back of him store. Mm. Him couldn't mm. answer me. I will never answer me because that is not his plan or intention. Right. It wasn't in plan and it was not one of his intention of do giving me something. I have to go inside them shop and buy them back from him. Mm. Yeah? Jeez. So you see, when it comes to treatment from those people, I don't know what name not no good treatment. Mm-hmm. The only time when me start my calico money is when me start producing myself. I'm used to distribute my music to people come from all about the world, come to Jamaica to buy export record. Mm. And it's so me start to make calico money because me always record my own self and and um and go to school to pay the engineer for mix it, carry it on a dynamic sound. And cut the mother stamper, and then me, me look about my own label. Now for the label, them I me de- me, me design them myself. Wow. And and me me, 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 uh, me produce them myself, and manufacture them myself, and start to distribute them myself. What year did you start doing that? We don't know the seventies. Mm-hmm. But. Start from about 72, 75, okay. 74, you know. The first time we start making money is when we start to put out some 45 record for myself. Not for me, some of the songs that we do them over more than one time. Mm-hmm. And why me do that? Because it, when me do it for Cox now, at least Scratch Perry, they now give me no money. Right. So, me, me, me lick them in a sec. That's why you find say, enough of me sang them. you find now more than one cut. Right. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. They, yeah. Because you, you never, because they're such good songs and, and you never got paid for them the first time. That's, mm-hmm. I understand right. that. Yeah. And and people tell me, say, Winston Jarrett, after I pass 30 years, the song belongs to you. You can take back the song and put them out. We, we, we issue them back over. Mm. Because the time passed. They make as much money off of it. Already. So you can take back your thing. You th- you, you, the song belongs to you. Mm-hmm. When you do a song for your man and talk about it, you own it. You can never own you don't have no right to own a song till you're dead mm-hmm. or after you die. You still have it. So what happened to the artist? I see Juno buys in a Jamaica eating out a garbage pan. Right. Because them take away publishing. Them take away mechanical rights. Them take away everything from him. With that song named Curly Locks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sells about a million. Everyone what? at Juno Biles soon them sell million. Oh, yeah. Classic tunes. Beat Down Babylon. Beat Down Babylon. You name them. A place called Africa. Mm. Yeah. And the man eating out a garbage pan. Yeah. It's people have come together and say, no. Make me try for help Juna Biles. It's sad. Yep. It's sick in my head. 
him, him not him not thinking properly like for when him young because I'm thinking over him career so tell like him gone crazy. This these people in Jamaica I call a lot of them Captain Morgan and I call a lot of them Admiral Ven Venable. Mm -hmm. And I call a lot of them Black the Pirate. I give that those names to those producers like uh, Joe Gibbs. I sing a lot of songs for him. Right. I never get none. Mm. Wow. Prince Boston, you name them. And how long are you going to wait? If you feel you're going to get royalty from those people, then put all for them name for your thing, and say for it, them own it. Them take away your publishing, them take away everything mm. from, from the artist. And again, if you are an artist coming up and start to do your, have your little career, if you don't have a manager, a good publisher, you, you have to have an, uh, you, you have to under good management mm -hmm. to manage your career. How much things you, the artist, can do if you think you're going to make a money out of it. Record business is not no hustling thing. Hmm. If you're going to think if it's a hustling thing, like how we say most people think or all them do things, you're not going to make no money, my friend. You have to have a good manager Who can manage you, the artist? All you have to do is come sing, man. Right. Those people supposed to can, if they mean well of you, and want to work along with you. That's how it's supposed to go. I hope it's supposed to be. Mm. You know, to manage your affair. Yep. So you can concentrate on 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 the creative aspect. Yes, you can concentrate and and do singing. Yeah, writing tunes, singing songs. And writing songs. Yeah. That is your work. Right. That's, that's yes, exactly. It's but rough. But if you want to depend upon these guys and say they're going to do something for you, you will die because they steal everything and right. take it away from you. It's and they will suck your blood dry. Mm. Just, Anybody uh, who have done them thinking cap and have them heads crew on properly and use not a chicken head like when you cut off a fall head and you see the fall a jump without a head. Mm -hmm. If you think so out the way you think about the business, you're going to suffer and die. Mm -hmm. Now, it's... now the business gone to a wreck because it's not like before. You have to go put you have to go put your tune pan. You have to go put your tune on on the on um Spotify and all that stuff. Spotify, all of the the main. Mm -hmm. It's a different game for sure. The streaming sites. All of the main digital pl platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before you can make a money now. Yeah, totally different. The business is not like what it once was. Mm -mm. Right. Everybody a thief and everybody a suck your blood and spit you out dry. Mm hmm. You'd have to go find a job. <laughs> yes. You know, my career, me tired of get beaten. Right. Everybody come boofing, buffing, kicking, boofing. Winston Jarrett. And then we start waiting to beat me up. 
and take with me guitar and, and bust it up. Box and kick me. Because I me, me, me kind of know what's going on in the business. Mm -hmm. And if I hook my mouth, I'm going to ram something down my throat. Yeah, them things that me get in the business, and those things make me become smart, mm -hmm. and make me become wise to the business, or in the business. The car my career, people love. Yep. Love my music. It's since me come and married to my wife, Sister P. I'm live in America. And, and people ask me, Winston Jared, what it, why it took you so long to come in America? What took you so long? Why you just come? As I said, I did not know that my stepping stone is my stepping stone. I learned about my stepping stone. I have to use my stepping stone and start to step. Mm -hmm. And when I step, I make the right move and make the wrong, right um Think the right way and do what you have to do and do the right thing. Well, I know we as as reggae, you know, people who just love Jamaican music and love your music are so happy that you found a way to, you know, persevere through through all of this because I mean, I don't know what uh, I don't know what my record collection would look like without Winston Jarrett records in it. Um, so we have to thank you for that. And you know, we really hope that you will agree to come back on the show because there's so much more of the story to talk about and we only have a limited amount of time and uh, we have to wrap up pretty soon, but um, there's so much more to talk about and all right, you know, would you, would you be into coming back on sometime? Yes, man. Nice. Yes. It's my pleasure because you see, I, I have to think smart. I, I, I would say think wise. Because it's my career and what it means to me. That's right. It mm -hmm. means so much to me that I willing at all times. If me must sleep in my bed, a man can wake up and say, Winston Jarrett already. You want to perform on a show? Are you willing to do so and so and so? As long as I'm my career, me come. Nice. Yeah, that's why I'm in love. I love um, working with you guys. Yeah, I, and, I mean... I, and, it, and Jeff Algrove. Yeah, big up Jeff. Yeah, big I up have Jeff. A song, I have a song here, a new album. Oh, nice. Can, yes, please tell us about that. This album named Words of Wisdom. The new album... Sure. This is the back and this is the front. Nice. See, so hold it up. Words a bit. of wisdom. Ooh, nice. Winston Jarrett, and words of wisdom. That's that's the new one. When did that come out? It, it, it just uh, it just last year. Oh wow. I work on it, but I, I didn't it don't really yet. I give it to Jeff Algrove to uh, distribute and okay. you know put on all the the, the main digital platform like right. iTunes, Amazon, new, mm -hmm. new um, tune core, all mm -hmm. of the platform, then the major ones. Yeah, people can find it, and we really so want to people, encourage everybody to go to go listen to that and pick that up and support Mr. Winston Jarrett. Everybody, if you hear it, you see all the jackets. I mean, the sleeves small. Yeah. yeah. For sure, you say I didn't really plan to do it this way. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to put it also on vinyl mm -hmm. and also a bigger sleeve. But them say small things come in, good, in small part, good things come in small parts. 
That's hey nowadays. That's what I'd if be telling you. Know, some good songs is on it. Very good. Repeat well, you, old you, stuff, you, old stuff and new stuff. Nice. You, you know, wait. you know what is so refreshing is just hearing you sing today is great because it's like your voice is just as amazing as it's always been. Yeah, it sounds great. And so that just gets me excited to listen to this album because, you know, we're getting 100% Winston Jarrett. So I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah, stoked me tell to, you to hear me have Me have so much albums. I, I know you guys are supposed to know. Oh, you yeah. know, oh, yeah. like Survival is a Game. That's, ooh, that's a oh, cool, yeah. classic. You know, I do I, I do that song for Studio One. It's a it's the last album release when Coxon died. Mm -hmm. it, no, near crucial times. Crucial Man of the Ghetto album and Studio One. Mm -hmm. Man of the Ghetto is a great album. I, I enjoy that album so much. Yeah, Man of the Ghetto. Yeah, Jonestown is another one. Ooh, Jonestown. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, yeah. I do Jonestown's that nice. album. I, I, do, I do that album for Leroy P. Um, for that, um, I know who you're talking about, too. I can't think of the name right now. He passed away in, in St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. But I can't think and of And he used to come to he used to come to Jamaica with Roy McPherson. And he was looking all record, you know, the all records, them, the vinyl, them. Mm -hmm. Real authentic, where people hardly can find. And he, I came to a man down low clean. We did have a whole heap of jukebox. And when him see the amount of old songs that that man have, he, he started to cry like people. A man was beating him <laughs> with a big stick. He cried like a baby. Because when he, the man, he asked the man if he can look on some of the record. And the man said, yes, why not? And the condition of the record that you see, how the man take care of those old songs, like them brand new. Right. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. I would cry too. Yeah. And the man cry because the man said, he asked the man if he can sell him some. And the man said, yes. And the man pick out a hundred and sell him. Wow. And because he want more to the amount of MC the man have, he want, he wouldn't mind get all of them. Mm -hmm. And the man tell him, say, no, no, nah, sell no more. Uncle 100. And if we're glad to get the hundred. Right. And he mm -hmm. cry again. <laughs> he start to cry. And the man say, watch ya, leave, leave out time place for him get vexed. Mm -hmm. Because him the want, him the want all 400 US for one copy. And the man, and him, Night Hawk, did not, couldn't afford to buy it for that so much dear price. Right, night. So the man say, right. all right, he must settle for that, that price where he might go pay him, but he not he can give more than a hundred. And I carry him out, he was living him when he come to Jamaica, I'm still for that big expensive hotel in a new Kingston. And when I go up there, he said, come up and come check him all the while. Can not want to do an album with the Ethiopians? Mm-hmm. Leonard Dillon. Leonard Dinal, him love Leonard Dinal bad, bad. Yeah, me too. And him love Justin Hans bad, 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 bad. Leroy Pearson, right? That was his name. No, Leroy Pearson worked with him. Night okay. Up. Okay. He named Bob Shanfield. Hmm. Schoonfield. Okay. Sean Schoonfield. Hmm. Him own Night Up. Record, but Levi Pearson worked as him second, okay. but right, him rub him up and draw a gun upon him. Wow. One forty-five, you know. Jeez. Wow. And him is the man come to Jamaica. Me telling you now. And me said to him, say, 
I said to Leroy Pierce, I said, Leroy, you see how I carry Bob Shanfield all over the place and he wouldn't give me a money. He was saying to pay me for my day work then. Because I came and no, all kind of place, because me was mm. the man we know. Enough of them sound, man, and enough people who did have jukebox like by the hundred thousands. Wow. And I carry them around. Because enough people come at Jamaica and me was the man who carried them around. But look all the record. Wow. And I said to, to Levi Pierce, he said, Tell him, talk to him, man, and make him know, say, he must give me a money, you know. And leave where I go back, keep a meet with him and talk to him. I say, you must have to pay a Winston Jarrett, man, because look for the amount of record where I'm carrying. Some of the record where I want, like one cup of coffee with Bob Marley, mm -hmm. we hard to get. Yeah. And some crucial song where him cannot get so easy. Cause people want enough money a copy for them. Yep. Oh, we know, I yeah. I mean say pay me man. So Lee Levi Pearson talk to him and give him he give my money for give me. I me take that money and say me now nah, eat it off. I me go in at this food and me say Levi say, What you gonna do with it with Stan Jerry? Me say me gonna do album man. Nice. Say you really gonna do that? We say yeah. He said he didn't believe, and he said to tell Bob Shanfield say, uh, it's an album I'm going to do with the money when he gave me. And he never believed. And he fly out and go back to St. Louis, Missouri. And you know what he do? When behind me back, Leroy, he sent back Leroy Pierce to come check if he find out if I really do the album for you. And when hmm. him come in, uh, in uh, the show, them see me are working on. The China Smith and the whole of them. And me produce the album and give it back to him. Wow. And tell him, say, if you get royalty mm -hmm. for every copy, and and and, and me have already said this song, and the LP sell good, 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 so good. And, and the man never give me a dollar. Jeez. Wow. Once again, huh? Well, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Well, we, we, you know, we're, we're pretty much out of time. So, uh, let's, that's all right. Winston, wait, you hear us? Looks like, can you hear us? Looks like it might have froze. Hmm. Well, let's see if, if maybe, you know, he'll jump back in and we can give him a proper send off. Send off and thanks, jeez. I mean, wow, that was that, one of the I, great that's like ones. chapter one, man. That's, that's like chapter, chapter one of one. like twenty, man. There's so much to talk about, and it's just I can't believe. I mean, I th at this point I believe it, but it's just like it's just so rough to hear about like who to you and me and so many people watching are our musical heroes and who just created some of the most enduring music and some of the greatest music and just who struggled and are still struggling, you know? Yeah, off of off of just not getting paid. It's just really discouraging, but, um, you know, all we can do is all we can do is is keep supporting these artists who are still with us, and uh, when they have new music, just buy it, buy mm -hmm. it. Even if you don't like have a CD player, like buy their CD, buy their LP, let's right. stream their stuff all the time, um, because people like Winston Jarrett, you know, are getting royalties from their from their current stuff. So that's right. that's the way to go. Uh, this has been a super long show, so. We want to real quick um, do some shout outs here. And we have partnered with the Roosland podcast to uh, uh, do this, this. This podcast is amazing. It's presented by Consequence of Sound. The host is Henry K.O. He's a great storyteller. It's a must listen for any fans of Jamaican music. And episodes will be republished on Rootfire's SoundCloud starting this Sunday. Um, and every episode, it's going to start with episodes one and two and a new episode every Saturday for the next few months. Everybody go check, uh, Root Fire's SoundCloud and the Rootsland podcast. Also, we want to big up songs from scratch with Nate Feinstein, Nate, Nate yeah. our buddy, Nate Feinstein from Ayaterra. We did, Roger and I did an episode with him. Check it. Instagram at Nathan underscore Aurora. You know, we have to big up the best live stream on the internet, Clinton Farron, a Sunday with and talk with a friend. You can follow 
Clinton at Clinton Fair on Music, that's Facebook, and also at Clinton Fair on Instagram. We got to big up our homies, Junior Francis and Eric Kohler, with History of LA Ska. These guys are some Los Angeles OGs celebrating SoCal ska and reggae scene, and they've been having some heavy hitters like Stranger Cole. They just had Vernon Maytone on. Go find, mm-hmm. go follow them Instagram at History of LA Ska. We have to big up Mr. Chuck Foster, who is responsible for so many people in LA learning about Jamaican music. Chuck Foster's Reggae Central radio show. It's on KPFK ninety point seven FM, and it streams at kpfk.org every Sunday from two to five. Listen to this; it's so good. Uh, once again, Mr. Junior Francis's reggae show, we have to big him up every Saturday night, 8 to 11 p.m. at KXLU.com. It's also streaming at KXLU FM, but you have to live within like three feet of the radio station to get that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, last but not least, the Dub Club every Wednesday night, 9 to 12 a.m. I-, I-, I can sniff the return of, uh, of live Dub Club. I-, I can smell it around the corner. I smell yeah, those. Man. I smell those bacon wrapped hot dogs. <laughs> I said it's coming. It's coming. It's almost here. But for now, they're they're doing one of the best uh, DJ nights on the internet. So go follow them at twitch.tv slash dubclubla. It's happening tonight at nine PM in about forty five minutes. So go check that out. All right, Raj. Um, that was that was a great episode, man. It was a great episode, man. Really good. Really, real quick. What you got coming up? Uh, no, no new, new, new info other than uh, if you guys want to check out some really cool reggae music by Mr. Jason Mraz, I had the opportunity to play on a couple of his reggae albums, and we're gonna do a live stream on May twentieth. Go to jasonmraz.com for tickets. You won't regret it. It's really cool music, really cool vibe. Come yes. and join us for the virtual concert. Devin, what do you got? I'm doing the songbook sessions. I'm giving guitar lessons and vocal lessons and songwriting lessons at backstagemusiclessons.com. Also, go follow me on Twitch, Man Like Devin. And we just want to remind everybody once again that we are switching to a pre recorded format. We're really stoked about that. Um, so, you know, go tell your, if you're listening to this as a podcast or not, go follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go subscribe. Give us a rating and a five star review because that moves us to the top. We're already like when you type in reggae on the podcast forums, you find the reggae podcast pretty quick. And we're trying to get to the top of that just so we can spread these stories a lot easier so you know go tell your friends about the pod the, uh, the reggae pod clash it really really makes a difference to us every time like one new person subscribes so um you know if you want to th- think of a way to support the pod clash beyond buying our merchandise at reggae pod clash at rootfire.net um just getting people to subscribe to the podcast is the way to do it and we really appreciate that it helps uh, spread the message of the show and helps us to keep doing it um all right and We've got some great uh, artists coming up, but it's all going to be pre-recorded, so we can't tell you about it. But we've got like six or seven people booked for the summer, and they're going to start coming out with regularity. But until we talk to you again, um, I'm Man Like Devin. I'm Roger Rivas. And this is how you clash a pod. And we'll see you soon. Later, everybody. Big up Winston Jarrett. Go buy Winston Jarrett's music. Later.